Hello, Matthews. Gatos here. Welcome to Chapter 6, Rational Expressions and Equations. We're going to start with some expressions, look at some non-permissible values, how to simplify, and how to model situations. Before I begin this chapter, I'd just like to let you know there is a fine line between a numerator and a denominator, but only a fraction of you will understand that. Speaking of that fine line, do you guys know what that line is called between the numerator and denominator? Fun fact, it is called the vinculum. So you can store that in your back pocket for future use. So let's talk about what a rational expression is. It's basically an algebraic fraction. You have a polynomial in the numerator and the denominator. So here's some examples of rational expressions. 1 over x, fraction y squared minus 1 over y squared plus 2y plus 1. Both polynomials in the numerator and denominator. m over m plus 1. Polynomials in the numerator and denominator. Now, x squared minus 4, would you believe, is also a rational expression. Doesn't really look like it at first glance, but I want you to know that any polynomial can always be made into a fraction by placing it over 1. So now that we know what a rational expression is, let's talk about restrictions and non-permissible values. So non-permissible values are the value or values of the variable that would make the denominator equal to zero. So what we're gonna do is set the denominator equal to zero by, and then isolate the variable to find the non-permissible values. Now, once I know my non-permissible value, for example, if x equal 3 makes the denominator 0, the non-permissible value would be 3, but the restriction would be x cannot equal 3. Now, every question that we deal with where the variable is in the denominator, you must always look for non-permissible values and state your restrictions, even if the question doesn't ask you to. So remember, a 0 in the denominator is a big no, but a zero in the numerator is okay. Let's practice stating some non-permissible values. So I have six minus x over two x, and I wanna state the non-permissible values. So remember, I'm only looking for a zero, division by zero in the denominator. So whatever is my denominator, in this case two x, it can't equal zero. So let's divide both sides by two, and I get that x cannot equal to zero. Now a tip for you with this and every other monomial, the restriction will always be the variable cannot equal to zero. Let's try this one here. So set your denominator equal to zero. So x minus seven can't equal zero. So add seven to both sides and x cannot equal to seven. So the non-permissible value is seven. The restriction is x can't equal seven. Let's look at this one here. So in this one, I have two different factors in the denominator, so I have double trouble. So I have to set each factor equal to zero. So in this one here, I will add three to both sides and get x can't equal three. Here, I will subtract one from both sides and then divide by two. So I have two restrictions, x can't be three or negative a half. So now that we've talked about restrictions, let's talk about how to simplify. We're gonna start with monomials first. So for monomials, I'm gonna divide numbers with numbers, x with x, y with y, etc. A simplified rational expression cannot have a common factor other than one to the numerator and denominator. I want you to remember to state your restrictions before simplifying so you don't miss any of them. So let's look at this example here. So before we do anything, let's look at our restriction. So in this case here, we have a potential for division by zero with the monomials. So monomials have the restriction that the variable can't be zero. So both A and B can't be zero. Let's look at the numbers. So I have 12 over 20. So 12 over 20, let's put that into lowest terms, common factor of four. So in lowest terms, that would be three over five. Let's look at the a's. a squared divided by a. So I have two a's in the top, one a on the bottom, so I'm left with one in the top, two minus one is one. Let's look at the b's. I have more b's in the denominator, and I have three take away one, two. 
So in lowest terms, it would be 3a over 5b squared, where a can't be 0 and b can't be 0. Let's talk about how to simplify rational expressions with binomials and trinomials. So in this case, because I have a binomial or a trinomial, I can factor. So I want to factor the numerator and denominator all the way. State the restrictions only for the denominator. And then simplify by dividing numerator and denominator by any common factors. So I want you to factor, restrict, simplify in that order. F, R, S. So let's try this question here. So I want to factor first. So factoring, I have in the numerator a GCF of 2. In the denominator, I have a difference of squares. So I've done my factor. Now let's go to restrict. Okay, so you can see I have two factors. That's double trouble. So I have to look at both. So m minus 3 can't be 0, which adding 3 to both sides, m can't equal 3. And here m plus 3 can't be 0, so I subtract 3 from both sides to get m can't be negative 3. So my restrictions, m cannot equal plus or minus 3. And then my last step is simplify. So see how I have a common factor of m minus 3 to the numerator and denominator? I can divide that out. m minus 3 over m minus 3 is 1. And I'm left with 2 over m plus 3. Final answer with that restriction. So I've done the simplifying. The last step, which is, in my opinion, the most important step, is the check. So I can check this on the calculator as follows. I put my original question in Y1. I put what I think is the answer in Y2. And remember, the check always happens in the table. So here you can see Y1 equals Y2. So I know I have done that question correctly. common mistake with simplifying that I want to address right up front. When you simplify, you can only remove common factors, not common terms. So here's an example. I can cancel an x plus 1 with an x plus 1 because x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 is just 1. In this example, I cannot simplify. I can't divide an x within a factor. So this is not an x in the numerator. It's actually an x plus 2. It's all attached. So remember, you can only simplify common factors, not parts of factors. OK, let's do this question here. We're going to factor first. So in the numerator, I see that I have a difference of squares. So I will add one set, subtract the other. In the denominator, I have a greatest common factor of 3. So 12y divided by 3 is 4y. Take away 15x divided by 3 is 5x. So I'm going to state my restrictions. Okay, so you can't divide by 0. So I put my whole denominator equal to 0. And notice this time I have two variables. So my tip is when you have two variables that are connected, just state the non-permissible values for one. And it doesn't matter which one, x or y. So what I'm going to do here is divide both sides by 3. And I'm going to add 5x to both sides. So I get 4y can't equal 5x. And then I can isolate for x or for y. Let's isolate for y. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and I get y cannot equal 5x over 4. So that's my restriction. So I've done my factoring. My restriction is y can't equal 5x over 4. Now let's go to simplifying. So when I'm simplifying, I'm looking for the same factors. And you can notice here, I have a factor of 4x, sorry, 4y minus 5x and 5x minus 4y. So those look really similar, but they're opposite signs to one another. So what I'm going to do is factor out a negative 1 from this one here. So if I factor out a negative 1, I have 5x divided by negative 1 is negative 5x. Negative 4y divided by negative 1 is positive 4y, which is really the same as 4y minus 5x. So you can see that matches my factor in the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this here 
as negative 1 times 4y minus 5x. And then you can see those cancel. So what I'm left with is negative 5x plus 4y in the numerator all over 3. That would be my final answer with that restriction. Now I want to show you a little shortcut that you can do when you have a situation similar to this. Now normally when we're simplifying we have a plus b over a plus b. So those are the same terms and the same sign, a and positive a positive b, positive b. That just simplifies to be positive 1. If I have, as I did in the last case, something like this, a minus b over b minus a, these are the same terms but opposite signs. Look, a and negative a, negative b and positive b. Well, those just simplify to be negative 1. So we can use that shortcut just remember this tip that you have to put the negative 1 in the numerator. So let's try another example. So I want to factor first. Nothing to factor in the numerator, so I'll leave it as 2 minus 3d. And then I'm going to factor my denominator, whichever way you like to factor. It's entirely up to you. So here I have 3d and 2d is 6d positive. There we go. So I can see that this factors as 3d times 2d is 6d squared. Negative 3d and negative 4d is negative 7d. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. So I know I did that correctly. Let's state our restrictions. We have two factors in the denominator, so that's double trouble. That means I need two restrictions. So add 2 to both sides, divide both sides by 3. Add 1 to both sides, divide both sides by 2. So my restrictions are that d cannot equal to 2 thirds or 1 half. So I've done my factor, my restrictions. Now let's simplify. So I see, as I did in the last example, a little shortcut I can do. I have 2 minus 3d and 3d minus 2. So same terms, opposite signs, 2 and negative 2 negative 3d and d. So those simplify to be negative 1, and I put the negative 1 in the numerator. So my final answer is negative 1 over 2d minus 1, and that's simplified. Again, most important part of any question that you do is the check. So you can see here I've put the original expression in y1, I put what I think my answer is in Y2. The check always happens in the table, and you can see I have, in fact, done that correctly. So remember to always state your restrictions because it's all fun and games until someone divides by zero. You guys can go on and do your practice questions and then go on to the textbook after that. I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Bye.